Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on cancer. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, the growth factor receptor. So, growth factor receptors is one of the topics for this video. Uh, we're going to look at uh, how, basically, growth factors, which are molecules, uh, well, they're proteins, uh, how growth factors binding to growth factor receptors, um, I want to put growth factor receptors, triggers a uh, downstream signaling pathway known as the MAPK uh, slash ERK pathway, the MAPK ERK pathway, um, growth factor receptors and the MAPK ERK pathway. And uh, we're going to look at how um, this actually causes a cell to divide, basically. Okay, so that is the topic for this video. Right, so let me just underline the title and then we'll begin. Right, so um, let's start with the motivating question, which is, we have a cell which is sitting in the interphase of the cell cycle. So we have a cell here which is not dividing. At the moment, it's in the interphase of the cell cycle. So it's in the long um, phase where it doesn't actually divide. Okay, so we want to know how do we actually induce this cell to leave the interphase, here's interphase, and how do we actually get it to go into the active um, active part of the cell cycle, i.e. how do we tip it from being an interphase to going into the first growth phase. Now remember, I'll just go over a brief review of the cell cycle. So interphase is this phase where the cell is just sitting quiescent, basically. It's not actively dividing. It's doing whatever its role in the body is, but it's not dividing. Now, something needs to trigger that cell to leave the interphase and go into the first growth phase. Now, what the first growth phase consists of is um, producing a lot of proteins uh, that are going to be involved in replicating the DNA, so copying all the genetic information. So you may get ready, basically, to copy the genetic information. You make all the proteins that you're going to need in order to actually do this. And then what happens is you go into the S phase, or the synthesis phase of the cell cycle, which is the phase where you actually copy the genetic material, where you actually replicate all the DNA. So where this is the preparatory phase, where you make all the stuff that you're going to need in order to do the synthesis, and then you have to get past a very important checkpoint known as the G1S checkpoint. Uh, and once you get past that checkpoint, uh, you actually start... Uh, replicating the DNA, basically. Okay, uh, then what you do is you go into a second growth phase, or a second gap phase, which is known as G2 phase, which is where the cell prepares for, firstly, nuclear division. So, the first thing is you have to divide the nucleus. You have to make two nuclei from one nucleus with um, double the amount of genetic material now. So, you have to separate the, the copied genetic material and you have to separate the nuclei. That uh, stage is known as mitosis. Uh, so, mitosis means um, uh, nuclear division. And uh, so in the G2 phase, you're preparing for that nuclear division. And then the, also what's about to happen is that you're actually going to divide the cell. So cytokinesis means the actual splitting of the cell into two. And then, uh, then you've got two daughter cells which can go into the interphase for a while. Okay, so in G2 phase, you prepare for mitosis and then cytokinesis. And mitosis and cytokinesis together are known as the M phase of the cell cycle. Okay, so they're the phase where you actually go from having a cell which has double the amount of genetic material that it should uh, to uh, two separate cells, basically. Okay, so if we want a cell to undergo this cell cycle process, to divide in two, then we somehow need to get it to go from being in this quiescent phase, this interphase, to going into G1 phase, i.e. making uh, loads of proteins that are important in DNA replication, so making all the proteins that you're going to need in order to replicate DNA. Right, so what we're going to see is how you can actually induce that. We've seen one way, which is through the uh, Wnt uh, beta catenin pathway, uh, but now what we're going to see is another way, which is through growth factors and growth factor receptors. Okay, so let's say this is the cell membrane of our cell which we want to 
induced to divide. So here's our cell membrane. Okay, right. So, in the cell membrane, you have a protein uh, known as a growth factor receptor, basically. So, there are loads of different growth factors in the body, and there are loads of different growth factor receptors. So, I'm going to keep it general, because um, all of them basically work in the same way. So, uh, we're going to keep this nice and general, so we're just going to call this a growth factor receptor. So, we're not going to make it specific for which growth factor we are talking about. If you want an example, we could make it growth epidermal growth factor, and in this case, this would be the epidermal growth factor receptor. But we're going to keep it completely and utterly general. So, this is just a growth factor receptor, or a GFR. Okay? So, a growth factor receptor. Right. So, what happens is when the growth factor comes along, it's going to come and bind to its growth factor receptor. And then if this was the epidermal growth factor receptor, so keep in mind that specific example, the epidermal growth factor receptor, uh, which is a typical growth factor receptor, uh, which you would denote EGFR, okay? Uh, so if this uh, was the epidermal growth factor, then the lig uh, growth factor receptor, then the ligand for it would be the epidermal growth factor. But keeping it nice and general, we'll just have growth factor here. But um, in brackets, we'll put that it's the epidermal growth factor you can think about. Okay, so that, though in brackets is the specific examples, um, the it, out of brackets are the more general case. So basically, what happens is this ligand, this growth factor, comes and binds to the extracellular growth factor binding domain of that growth factor receptor, basically. Okay, so in pink we have the growth factor, in orange we have the growth factor receptor here. Okay, so what happens next, basically? Well, it turns out that one of these growth factor receptors isn't enough. You need two of them. So, let's draw another one here. Okay, so here's our second um, growth factor receptor, and it too is bound to a growth factor molecule. So we've got two of them now. And, of course, the cell will have loads in its cytoplasm. But the important thing is that they dimerize, basically. Once growth factor has bound to the growth factor receptor, what happens is that the growth factor receptor undergoes a conformational change. So I'll show that conformational change now. So um, when there's no growth factor uh, present in the extracellular medium, then there's no growth factor bound to these growth factor receptors. Now, when there's no growth factor bound to the growth factor receptors, the growth factor receptors like to remain on their own. So this growth factor receptor will remain on its own. It won't dimerize with another one. However, <coughs> excuse me, uh, when growth factor binds to the um, growth factor receptor, what happens is it triggers a conformational change in the growth factor receptor, and now, basically, they want to dimerize. So this is what's going to happen. So let's say this is one growth factor here, and this is the conformational change. So I'm just going to draw it like so. It's made a little sort of bridge, and now that's going to join with one of these uh, bridges from the other one. Okay, so they've dimerized together, basically. And the important thing is that they now have growth factor bound to them. So when growth factor binds, it triggers a conformational change, and the two uh, growth factor receptors dimerize, basically. So here's our ligand here. And uh, in orange is our actual growth factor receptor here. Okay, right. So, the next step then, after you've got this dimerization of uh, the growth factor receptors, because they've now changed conformation upon binding their ligand, what happens is uh, that um, uh, a step known as autophosphorylation happens. Okay, so for this I need to give a little bit of background information about uh, what type of a receptor a growth factor receptor is. So growth factor receptors belong to a massive great class of um, receptors known as receptor tyrosine kinases. Okay, it, well these ones that I'm talking about in this video um, uh, belong to receptor tyrosine kinases families. Okay, so receptor tyrosine kinase family. And basically, um, the characterizing feature of a receptor tyrosine kinase is that it has tyrosine residues. So, I might draw some of these tyrosine residues down here, basically. So, they, they have tyrosine residues on them down here. And uh, what's going to happen 
is that once they dimerize, their, pet, their uh, partner, basically, is going to phosphorylate the tyrosine residues on them. So this, this um, growth factor receptor here, it has its tyrosines down here. And this, um, its partner, its dimerized partner, it's this other growth factor receptor, is now going to add phosphate groups onto those tyrosine residues. So let me just show you the structure of tyrosine. Okay, so tyrosine is an amino acid, so it's in the, um, in the polypeptides, basically. So here's the amino terminus, here's the alpha carbon, here's the hydrogen off the alpha carbon, the carboxyl group, so that's the general structure of an amino acid. And now, tyrosine's specific structure is that it has a methylene group, like so, and then off that methylene group you have a benzene ring here, Enzyme ring, and then you have a hydroxyl group off there. So this hydroxyl group can have a phosphate group put onto it. So I'll just remind you of what the structure of a phosphate group is. A phosphate group has this structure: a phosphorus atom at the centre, doubly bonded to oxygen up there, two hydroxyl groups off it, and then an oxygen with a negative charge singly bonded to the phosphorus atom. So basically, what you can do is you can dehydrate. Um, De you can perform a dehydration reaction where basically you remove uh, a hydroxyl group here uh, or a condensation reaction, that's probably the better scientific term, not a, con uh, not a dehydration reaction, a condensation reaction where basically what you're going to do is you're going to remove the hydroxyl group from here, okay? You're going to remove the hydrogen from this hydroxyl group on the tyrosine, and you're going to bind that oxygen to the phosphorus atom. Then what you're going to do is you're going to bind this hydrogen to the hydroxyl group to get water. So that's why it's called a condensation reaction, because you're going to get condensation. You're going to get water being produced. Okay, so that's basically the reaction that is happening in these. The other... The, the, its partner receptor tyrosine kinase is going to phosphorylate its tyrosine residues. And this process is known as autophosphorylation, basically. Autophosphorylation. Right, and now that you have uh, phosphorylated each other's tyrosine residues, what can happen is another protein can come and bind to those phosphorylated tyrosine residues, basically. And uh, the protein that's going to come and bind is a protein known as growth factor receptor binding protein 2. So uh, I will draw um, phosphate groups having been added on here. So these are these phosphate groups. So I'll add them on in pink. And then I'll draw another picture showing the binding of growth factor receptor binding protein 2. Okay, so this is the phosphate group here, and I'm denoting it in pink on my picture by pink, these pink circles, basically. Okay, so what's now going to come and happen is that um, the protein is still in its dimerized form with its growth factor bound. So let's draw all this out again. Okay, um, here, here is the um, growth factor receptor. Here is the dimerization of the two uh, separate growth factor receptors. And here is the ligand, the growth factor bound to the second growth factor receptor here. And now basically what's going to happen is another protein is going to come and bind down here. And it's going to bind to each one of them, but we'll only show it in the case of one, because otherwise the picture is going to get awfully cluttered. Uh, so here is our uh, growth factor receptor in orange. And now we've got a new protein, which I'm going to denote in green, uh, called growth factor receptor binding protein 2. Okay, so this protein that has bound to the ty phosphorylated tyrosine residues of our growth factor receptor is growth factor receptor binding protein 2. Growth factor receptor binding protein 2 binding protein 2. Right, okay, and it's denoted GRB2 for short, uh, for uh, growth receptor and binding, basically. So GRB2 is the way you'll see this protein denoted. Okay, so GRB2 now binds to our activated growth factor receptor. Okay, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.